Okay, so we're here continuing to talk about water distribution system analysis. In the last, in another video I made, I had talked about how to use the Hardy Cross method to analyze pipe networks and figure out what the flow and velocity and pressure are throughout a water distribution system. Uh, we looked at how you could do that by hand and how you could do it in Excel and you know, that kind of gets torturous after a while because there can be lots of pipes and you may want to do this calculation over and over again. It can be challenging to get it to converge. So EPA Net is a software that we can use to do this uh, more quickly and easily and it actually is more sophisticated. It can deal with time varying conditions and it can do water quality also. It can look at like chlorine levels in water. So so we did another video where we kind of went over the basics of how EPA net functions and in this video I want to look at how we could work this example here and so this example has water flowing from a reservoir here to a junction and then some of it gets pulled out at this junction and then it flows to this one and some more gets pulled out there and then it flows here to a tower that it fills up okay so this is like a pretty simple network uh, as far as our first one we're going to actually build ourselves uh, for this one we're going to use the Hayes and Williams equation to calculate the friction uh, losses in each of the pipes and we've got the Hayes and Williams values for the three pipes here and then we've also got their length and diameter and then we've got these two junctions and we're told their elevation and then the amount of water that gets pulled out so 100 gallons per minute here and 50 there so this all tells us that really in our model we need to use gallons per minute for flow and then we need to um, make sure we get all the elevation in there we need to set it up with Hayes and Williams equation and then uh, we can run it and see what happens okay so we should have water flowing from here and this is at an elevation of a hundred and then again these are 90 80 and then this one is a tank that means the water level can go up and down over time and we're gonna have it uh, set to a value of 90 here to, to run this simulation uh, and we'll set it up where it can vary between 80 and 100 feet in the model okay so this is kind of our problem statement and now let's switch over here to EPA net and look at how we could do that okay so here's an EPA net window and again we can go in and file and open things and here we will we've got a new one so we could you know hit new and I had already done that so there's really nothing to see here but we're looking at a blank screen unlike the example that we've done before and so for this one we need to go in and start drawing our features and so the features here are one reservoir one tank two junctions and three pipes so we'll click reservoir or before I do that I guess I should set up the the, the project settings and so the analysis options here okay we're already set for Hayes and Williams equation in gallons per minute so we're good there so we really don't need to change any of these things but if you do another problem you want to make sure that you set this up at the beginning otherwise you're gonna to have to go and change everything later all right and because it's in gallons that means that everything will kind of default to feet if you're using metric then uh, it will do things in meters and centimeters and whatnot and you have to go always and look at the default information in the help file for these if you're doing that okay so you can pull that up here or you, the one online is a little bit better I think but there is one here so we can hit help topics and so you can look at like the units here if we want to look for like you know units of measurement yeah metric okay and then it shows you that these are the demands which will be the same as flow diameters will be millimeters so if you're working metric you do millimeters and if you're using US then it will be in feet okay so the diameter of tanks are in feet and the diameter of pipes are in inches okay so that's anyway you have to go and check this because it doesn't show you the units when we put that info in so it's good to just keep that in mind before you do anything otherwise you can end up putting information in wrong because you had a, the wrong units for what it was assuming you were going to give it so we checked that and really there was nothing to change there but just it's that's always the first thing um, all right, so we should be ready, I think, to go ahead and draw some stuff. So let's draw a reservoir there, and then we'll draw a junction, and then another junction, and then we'll put in a tank. And that's everything there for our nodes. And then for our links, we'll click on the pipe there, and we'll click from 1 to 2, and then from 
two to three, and then three to four. All right, and so boom, we've got our our system drawn there. All right, and so now let's go to the select tool here, and we will provide information on these. And so first up is the reservoir. Reservoir ID is one. In our problem statement, we might we might call it reservoir. So we can change that there. And really the only input on this, again, a reservoir is just an infinite source where water is going to be, water level is going to be fixed. The water is always going to be available. And for this one, we're saying it's at 100 and the units are feet. Again, it doesn't show that here, but that's the units for uh, when we're working in gallons per minute and US units. So really we're done there. Um, the junctions here, we need to put in the elevation and the demand and so the elevation of the first one is 90 it's called junction uh, j1 in the example so we'll go ahead and change that to and it has a demand of 100 gallons per minute and again the units will be the same as, as the overall flow units that we specified okay so really we're done there close that and now go to the next one and we'll call this one uh, j2 and then we can go down here and put in the elevation of 80 and it has a demand of 50 50 gallons per minute that are getting pulled out and so that one should be done and then we have the tank all right the tank one we might call uh, maybe we'll call it tank <laughs> really creative name names here it has four thing or five things that are all required for the tank we need to set the elevation that is the the baseline for this and so the levels here are the height above the elevation. So this is something to be aware of if you're using it in a system that if the say the base of the tower is is a thousand feet and then the lowest water level that it could have is say at a thousand twenty feet. Okay, that would be a level of twenty above that. So a thousand would be the elevation and then the minimum level would be twenty above that okay so we have to be aware of all this when we put it in otherwise it can cause uh, trouble so we'll go ahead and leave the elevation there at uh, zero and the minimum level here we're told for this one is eighty the maximum is a hundred and then the initial is ninety okay so it's set there at ninety and that these are all again relative to the elevation so uh, if we were to set the elevation at higher than that one it would actually be raising the tank up it raises all these numbers with it okay the diameter of the tank then we're told is uh, 12 feet and that again affects how much water is in the tank if it has a bigger diameter it will take longer to fill okay obviously so this that gets into the volume calculations so that's everything I think we need for the tank and then we are of the pipes so let's see pipe ID 1 starts the reservoir and then it goes to J1 and we might call this one it's called pipe P1 in the uh, problem statement so I can change that it has a length of 300 and then a diameter of 6 inches and it's cast iron which gives us a roughness of 100 and uh, for the Hazen Williams C value that should be everything we need there okay and so pipe 2 now we'll call it P-2 it shows us the start and end nodes. One note on this while I'm thinking about it, um, this shows J1 to J2 is the start and end. And so if the flow goes from J1 to J2, it will be positive. If the flow goes from J2 to J1, that means it'll be negative, okay? So when you draw these, you you start at one node and, and then drag it across to the other, it will have, that is the start and end node. And, if you think you you know which direction the flow is going to go, you want to make sure you draw it so that the flow is is positive. You know, if you want the flows to be positive, so so just something to keep in mind. Um, this one has a length of 200 and then a six inch diameter, and then it's also got a hundred for the roughness, so we're good there. And then the last one here, pipe P3, and it's got a length of 300 and diameter of six and a so I think that's everything we need so we might want to put some labels on here so we could do like view and then let's see if we can do this options and then labels let's see there how do we do this yeah that didn't show it there's a way to make this show up so labels I guess labels are something else we can add. If you add some text, like here, we can make a label that says this is our, you know, our pipe network. Okay, I think that was the feature for um, 
for that option. So yeah, it's got a zoom of 100. Let's see if we make it a little smaller, like 50. What does that do? No, well, that didn't work. All right. Uh-oh, what have I done here? Undo. All right. Well, there is a way to show the labels. So it's view, options, symbols. I don't know why it's not showing that. But anyway, we, we should have all the data in there now. And so let's go ahead and run it. It says the run was successful. If you get problems, then something could come up there and that can help you figure out if you left off like the pipe diameter or set it to zero or something that would cause an error or negative, then that would show up there. And so now we can pull up the information. So you could click them individually. Again, all this stuff we put in before and then it shows the um, the flow rate that was computed here. So this is a flow of 369 gallons per minute through this first pipe. And then the second one, we can click it and it's 269, which makes sense because there's 369 here and then there's 100 that are getting pulled out. We can also pull all that up again by uh, clicking on the network links and then we can view whatever we want for those. So maybe length, diameter, and then uh, we may not be interested in these other ones. So let's put those and yeah, here's the three pipes. We can see we got all the info there and then these are the flows. And again, the 50 gets pulled out of that other one and so these are all our flow rates. Um, let's look at the, let's see, I've been trying to get stuff to show up here. So the flow arrows, let's do those filled. And yeah, it shows the flow going in this direction. Um, yeah, so now that we're done, we may wanna save this. So we can do file, save as, and then here I can do this one as like a simple network. Maybe we call it in my EPA project file. And now we can load all this again. And once you've got all this built, then it allows you to go in and answer questions like, what if we made this pipe diameter bigger? You can see how that affects everything super quickly when you've built something like this. So hopefully you can see how that would be useful for your uh, analysis. Other thing we might wanna do here is to get information that's like a report of the output. So let's see if we can do this one. So there's a Report table, yeah, we can get it to make a report for the nodes, and I guess we could then, I guess that's really the same thing as we did down there. Let's see, we can also do re report, let's see, full report, and hmm, you can save this, and I guess that pulls up all the details of the nodes and um, links in the model, and then we can also do, let's see, report we could do a graph yeah if there was something changing versus time you could see how the flow or the pressure was going up and down as the demand went up and down the system here we don't really have anything changing so it would be kind of boring but but you could make graphs i guess of some of the parameters if you need to so um anyway it for for like your homeworks if you're doing this you would probably want to make a make a table and just copy that data. You can take a screenshot and paste it in, but just kind of do it like a report that shows what you what you did, okay? So uh, I will make then another video here where we'll go through and we'll show how we can work the example um, that we did in class together next.